time is the 11th century. You'll land in Vinland. You know it as North America, but no one will call it that for another 500 years. Leif Erikson and his band of Vikings should have departed for Greenland by now, but they're going nowhere fast. Find out what's holding them up. I'm sending Rock Solid to be your good guy. Rock's an expert explorer, and in the wilderness of Vinland, that's just what you'll need. He's got your time cuffs and another Chronopedia chapter. Good luck scouting, Time Scout! This must be where the Vikings landed in North America in 1002. But the Vikings should have sailed home by now. We better find out what went wrong. No! My ship! A scoundrel's run off with my poor ship! It's almost reached the horizon! Vikings were expert sailors and used vessels like that Knorr ship to travel and raid throughout Europe. The Atlantic Ocean is wide and treacherous. Only the sturdiest sailors and boats can traverse it. We Norsemen may be skilled sailors, but we prefer to stay within sight of land. While crossing the wide ocean, we spent several anxious days with nothing in sight but water. Vikings may have been the first Europeans to visit North America, but native tribes like the Inuits had already lived here for centuries. By Thor's hammer, my ship has been pilfered. I must summon my crew for a thing. Leif Erikson's the name. I'm an explorer like my father, Eric the Red. I've led my loyal crew here to Vinland. Leif Erikson was also known as Leif the Lucky, but Luckless might be a better name for him today. It is, landsman, it is. Another Greenlander, Bjarni Haraldsson, passed these shores but never landed. That was an honor he left for me. And now I must return to Greenland. Why to spread tidings of my discovery to the Norse people? And after eight long months here, even a mighty explorer can get homesick. A thieving rogue took our ship. Without it, we'll be marooned in Vinland forever. Alas, no. But I did catch a whiff of something vile in the air. I'll keep an eye on the ship, while you summon my crew for a thing. A thing is an assembly of Norsemen, gathered to make an important group decision. This democratic practice was brought from Iceland to Greenland by my father, Eric the Red. With a fleet of 25 ships, my father, Eric the Red, sailed from Iceland to settle Greenland in 985. Of course, everyone must contribute their opinion before a decision is reached. There'd always be doubt if we left someone out. Hurry back! Remember, just talk to me if you need any help, partner. Good eye! It's a scrap of Carmen's note to her thief. In places where wood and stone were rare, Vikings built houses like these out of grass sod.
The Viking shield was brightly painted and usually made of wood, with iron in the center and around its rim. That Norse shield can be held by hand or hung from a ship's side during fierce sea battles. That's an ornamental necklace called Thor's Hammer. Thor was one of the Viking gods like Woden, Loki, and Frey. Some of the days of the week in our modern calendar are named after Norse gods. Vikings used long, sharp spears as thrusting weapons. Talk about a tough toothpick. Blacksmiths used trusty tongs like these to hold on to sizzling red-hot metal. I get blisters just thinking about it. A sword was a Viking's most precious weapon. All I need is a spot of silver to finish off this ceremonial blade. Welcome, but stand back. This sword is white hot. I'm Ivor the Blacksmith. I make tools, weapons, and armor for the Norse community. Iron mostly. For a blacksmith, iron is as good as gold. I'm heating a braid of iron in my forge, then hammering it into a sword. It will be a beautiful piece, but I need a little silver to finish it off. Why, the sword is a Norseman's most valued weapon. We even give our swords dramatic names like Battlefire or Dragon Bite. But I can't name this new sword until I have some silver. I'm afraid I can't leave until I've polished off this sword with some fine silver. A well-crafted sword deserves to gleam like a dragon's eye. Blacksmithing was very important to the Vikings, whose survival in battle depended on the quality of their weapons and armor. Farewell, travelers. Come back and visit my forge again. You know, Leif may have named this country Vinland because of all the grapes growing here. Good thinking, but those grapes are out of reach. You know, real Viking helmets didn't actually have horns. That's just a myth. Horns? On a helmet? Who starts these crazy rumors anyway? That tough old stump has quite a weight on its shoulders. That is one big boulder. Solid as a rock, if I do say so myself. Why, hello! Watch out for these tools, because I'm a chiseling fool. If I don't flatten this stone, I, I can't carve my runes. I'm Olaf the rune maker. I record the exploits of my fellow Norsemen and our gods. I'm trying to flatten this rock, whew, so I can carve some Norse runes. <laughs> All letters in the Norse alphabet are made up of straight lines, so that they are easy to carve into stone. Sorry, not until I flattened this rock and finished my runes. Put your shoulder behind it and give that stump a solid thump. This boulder's broken flat! At last, I can carve out my runes! A rock on a rock is just what we needed. We've got the grapes! Don't tell Leif, but this southern seafarer can't swim. Hmm, those rocks don't look too solid. A shard of Carmen's card. Our thief can't be too far. 
Hello there. I'm Turker the Southerner. I grew up in a country south of the Norse homeland. I went ape for a grape and fell out of the tree. I couldn't help myself. The delicious grapes around here do not grow in chilly Greenland. Sorry, that water is cold. It's over my head and I can't even tread. I believe I'll stay right here and wait for more palatable conditions. Be careful, grapes don't float. A nugget of pure silver. Thank you. Now I can finish my sword. Time cuffs aren't active yet. We'll need to find all of Carmen's note first. That's the last piece of Carmen's note. Let's decode her tattered text. Now that the note's together, it's time to fire up the time cuffs for an arrest. <laughs> I'm big, but not big enough for a thief to hide behind. Welcome to The Thing. We have a decision to make. Shall we recover the stolen ship and return home, or instead accept where Thor's hammer has fallen and settle here in Vinland? Personally, I would like to return to Greenland with news of our discovery. I've had enough fighting and raiding. Vinland is pleasant enough. We Norsemen should strike fear into the hearts of our enemies. Let's reclaim our ship. Now that the choices are clear, let's vote and decide what to do. All who prefer to remain in Vinland, show your cowardly mitts. And let no one say this thing is rigged. Now, all those noble souls who would prefer to reclaim our ship and return in glory to Greenland, please raise your loyal hands. Well, it doesn't take the wisdom of Warden to see that a tie won't help us decide. Let us reconsider the issues at hand. As I said, I vote we recover our Norse ship and sail home to Greenland. What are your votes? We should settle this new land for future generations of Norsemen, just as Eric the Red settled Greenland. We've been away from our families for eight long months. Let's recover our ship and return to Greenland. Let's stay. Remember, there aren't any grapes back in Greenland. Hmm. Do you think we should say something? What are you doing, landsmen? Only worthy Norsemen can vote in a thing. But Leif, we are worthy Norsemen, uh, in spirit. Hmm, that's quite a claim. You must prove it. All Norsemen of worth know that we have named our days after the gods of Valhalla. Frey is the Norse god of sunshine and rain. What day comes before Frey's day? We say Thor's day. That's right. But you might have been lucky, like me. I'm going to pose you one more question. Woden, the god of war, is the greatest of the Norse gods. What day comes before Woden's day? We say Tears Day. Right again. You must be Norsemen after all. We'd be honored if you'd vote in the thing. Now that the choices are clear, let's vote and decide what to do. All who prefer to remain in Vinland, show your cowardly mitts. And let no one say this thing is rigged. Now, all those noble souls who would prefer to reclaim our ship and return in glory to Greenland, please raise your loyal hands. Well done. The issue is decided. Prepare the landing boat for battle. <laughs> Great job. With our help, the Vikings have reclaimed their stolen ship. The Vikings are ready to set sail, but we still need to catch a stowaway. Take a look at Carmen's note, and remember the time cuffs. This chest on the right-hand side of the ship is full of supplies for the long voyage back to Greenland. When sailing or rowing, the Vikings slide these sturdy sea chests to the sides of the ship and use them as benches. 
Knorr ships like this one generally used about 20 oars, but big long ships built for war had as many as 80. Talk about having a lot of pull. This old shield has certainly seen some action. It's full of spear and arrow holes. This chest along the left edge of the ship is full of tunics, cloaks, furs, and other clothing. That's the steering board, used by the helmsman to steer the ship. Of course! Our thieving rascal is hiding behind the steerboard to starboard. <laughs> Come on, Baron. We've got a nice bear cell ready for you at Acme Headquarters. You may have caught me, but you'll never wipe away the Baron's gleaming grin. Looking good, Time Scout. I must say, those Vikings have nothing on you in the toughness department. Oh, thanks, Rock. You restored Viking history, and thanks to you, Leif Erikson will make it back to Europe to spread the word about the New World. Well, Time Scout, you're quite an opponent. You apprehended the Baron, but there's no way you'll foil my next foray. It's already underway. Ta-ta. Sounds like the time crime wave is continuing. There's another history mystery to be solved straight ahead. Are you ready to take on the case? only jumps ahead a dozen years to 1015, but you're going from the wilderness to high culture, the kingdom of Japan during the Heian era. Murasaki Shikibu should be writing the world's first novel by now, but her pages are blank. Go seek out the source of her writer's block. I'll be sending along Acme's most artistically gifted good guide, Renée Sans. She has your time cuffs, your new Chronopedia chapter, and all the culture you could ask for. Hope you look good in a kimono, Time Scout. Best of luck! Welcome to Hayan era Japan. It's nighttime in the year 1015. There's Murasaki Shikibu, who should be cooking up her famous novel, The Tale of Genji but it looks like her creative sizzle has fizzled. My heart drifts aimlessly like the hours on a moonless night. I feel more sadness than I have for many seasons. What a syllabic slip-up! The tale of Genji is supposed to be the world's first novel. We better track down what's troubling Murasaki and get her weaving wondrous words again. No, it's not a funny guitar. That's a koto. I'll bet Murasaki can play some mean riffs on it. This is no ordinary scrap. It's a Carmen note, which puts us a measure closer to an arrest. Check this out. We're in Japan, but these scrolls were written in Chinese. Yes, I wrote those. It is difficult to believe. But Japanese women are not allowed to read and write in Chinese. I have to hide those scrolls or they'll discover my secret talents.
Hello. I'd say I'm gladdened by your presence, if I was glad. If only I could work on my novel. My spirits flutter aimlessly like the last leaves of autumn. A thief has taken my book's first chapter, and with it a piece of my soul. I can continue my novel no longer. Only the face of the full moon answers my inner questions. Can you bring it here to my room? Perhaps if you study the other rooms close by, you'll find cause for reflection. I was writing a novel. It's called The Tale of Genji. My novel is a long romance about Prince Genji and his many adventures in Japanese court life. I believe it's a very important work. I'm trying a new literary style called a novel. It's not a light tale. I look deeply into the lives of the characters and question why they do what they do. We're close to Empress Shoshi's royal palace. I'm her lady-in-waiting. For a funnier joke, perhaps? A lady-in-waiting waits on the Empress. I bring her clothes in the morning, keep her company, those sorts of things. It's easy work that allows me much time to write. I store my colorful kimonos back there. You may try them on if you'd like to fit in. It takes two to tango. We'll need a jacket and the perfect lining to go with it. Now what should I choose? My quill quivers, but not with novel inspiration. Without the moon, I'm only idly scratching away. My friends, your curious clothing may cause a court scandal. Please, feel free to try on one of my beautiful kimonos in the closet before departing. These poems here seem to be written about the <gasps> Japanese seasons. Murasaki, can you read a few? What poem is your pleasure? Rain softly fingers our bright summer kimonos wrapped over yellow. A beautiful jacket. Now hand me a colorful lining to go with it. But does it match my eyes? Ah, the sky. What a perfect night for moonlighting. That full moon is casting quite a moonbeam tonight out of this world. This room makes me feel like hot stuff. Yes? This proud sword is part of the imperial regalia handed down for centuries from one Japanese emperor to the next. In a sense, I'm holding Japan's shining history right here in my hand. Not without proper preparation. The way of the sword trains the mind while teaching combat skills. Without careful study, you'll poke your eye out. Perhaps because of my red-hot disposition. If you can't stand the heat, try another room. No, things around here have been as dull as a hot summer day. Bravo! Those hot threads set this place on fire. 
Stay cool. Murasaki, can we hear another poem about <gasps> the seasons? My pleasure. Which one would you like to hear? The harvest moon's hearth warms our autumn kimonos splendid over green. Those dreamy blooms are water lilies. Stay cool! This is a season to turn over a new leaf. In Japan, the harvest moon meant let's party. That's because the rice and other crops were ready to harvest. The leaves on these maple trees make like chameleons in the fall and change their colors. The leaves on these maple trees make like chameleons in the fall. Hmm. A folklore tells about the magic rabbit who lives in the moon. The man in the moon put him there for being the kindest of the animals. Some folk tales say that he bakes rice cakes for us to eat. Others say he grinds the jade iriksa, a source of eternal life. He's suddenly industrious. Of course not. I'm a professional. I'd be in big trouble if I let a mere thief slip by. What an eye for! Your kimono colors seem most suitable for my room. So wrong, don't fall out of touch. Murasaki. Can we hear another poem? My pleasure. Which one would you like to hear? Beneath Mount Fuji, our winter kimonos drift over brilliant red. If I ever get tired of Acme detective work, I could be a supermodel. My quill quivers, but not with novel inspiration. Without the moon, I'm only idly scratching away. This place is making me blue. Since I'm not sad, I must be shivering. Mount Fuji's no pile of rock to the Japanese. It's a sacred mountain, celebrated in paintings and verse. Cranes like to spend the winter in Japan. The weather here fits the bill. The Japanese call this a kotatsu. We'd call it a heater. You sit at a table and toast your toes over a hole filled with smoldering coals. Don't get a hot foot. When the wind beckons, I wrap this table above the kotatsu with a quilt and hold a cozy pocket of heat inside. It's green tea. Delicious. Mm. What do you want here? Why, yes. And she stumbled over my kotatsu. And if hitting my heater wasn't enough, she also tossed this litter on the ground. That C note means we're right on track. You're back for another frosty reception. Why, yes. I wanted to study interior design, but father insisted on guard school. Now there was a man with no fashion sense. Mount Fuji's no pile of rock to the Japanese. It's a sacred mountain, celebrated in paintings and verse. You're back. Of course, I'm an imperial guard, right? I'll ice any intruders. Nice outfit you have there. A stylish match for my cool room. Stay warm.
Murasaki, can we hear another poem about the seasons? <gasps> My pleasure. Which one would you like to hear? Paddling our frail boats, we drape our spring kimonos gently over blue. But what would my mother think? This spot puts a spring in my step. That's a sweet flag leaf, which protects boys from evil spirits during a traditional Boys' Day celebration here in Japan. Japan got wise and changed Boys' Day to Children's Day. They realize that it's only fair for both boys and girls to have their share. When the bush warbler appears, the Japanese know that spring's about to begin, just like the robin in America. Cherry blossom time is the big spring event in Japan. Beneath the trees, people watch the slow dance of unfolding cherry tree blossoms. When the bush warbler appears, the Japanese know that spring's about to begin, just like the robin in America. Mm. Japanese poetry often uses images of nature to express thoughts and feelings. Mirasaki uses such images in both her poetry and her prose. Japanese poetry has traditionally made great use of metaphor, phrases that have double meanings, some of them definitely funny. I eat thieves for breakfast, but sadly, no one has stopped by for a meal. Beautiful! Your fine kimono flourishes here, like the first buzz of spring. Do come again. The moonlight's returned, and with it, my joy. I can write again. Just part of our job description. Ooh, what a little moonlight can do. This little moonbeam seems to have cast new light on the case. Idle words scatter like brittle leaves. With the moon lighting my path, I can't pause for chatter. I must spin stories of the highest order. High five! Let's see how these puzzle pieces harmonize. With Carmen's note in one telltale piece, I'll activate the time cups. <laughs> Unlike kanji characters, where each symbol has an individual meaning, hiragana characters each represent a particular sound. String a few together, and you have words. And I think this word mentions an animal. Hmm, I believe these hiragana characters add up to an animal name, all right, but my Japanese is rusty. Let's scan the chronopedia to work out which animal this is. The cups are ready to go, but the thief's a no-show. Let's recheck the Carmen note to figure out where our vile villain is hiding. You're using your smarts now. The Carmen note tells us you made the right choice. Naturally, you smelled a rat in that Zodiac drawer. Mediva's the last evil diva who'll ever darken these doorways. It's back to Acme headquarters for you, Mediva, for a long spell in solitary. Don't think you'll keep me under wraps for long, agents. I've still got a few tricks up my sleeve. Huh. Terrific track 
cracking time scout. The world's first novel is well on its way to publication. Thanks to you, Mediva's in a cell, and Urasaki is moonlighting her way into history. Because of you, the novel will become the world's favorite literary form. Readers around the world, thank you. You're doing excellent work, and now's your chance to do more of the same. Another case is coming up fast. Will you take it on? We're whizzing down the years to feudal England in the ninth century. By now, William the Conqueror should be done conquering and on his way to kinghood. But William's worried, and something's amiss. See what you can find out. Polly Tix will be coming along as your good guide. If anyone can figure out the problems of an ancient political system, she's the one. Good luck, Time Scout. And don't swim in any moats. Know why the Chrono Skimmer rules? Cause we always arrive right on time! We're in England, 1086, and I'm standing by William the Conqueror, the French ruler of Normandy and England! Hey, you two! Watch your heads! There's a siege going on! A siege? That explains all the soldiers outside. We'll help you withstand this siege, King William. My archers shoot arrows through the crenels, those gaps in the parapet wall. They try to prick their Saxon targets without getting nicked in return. That machine is a ballista, a giant crossbow that shoots major spears, even flaming spears. Yes, ballista spears are often covered in a flaming goo called Greek fire. Quite awful stuff. Its formula is a big secret. That mangonel hurls huge boulders up and over the walls. It can even fling dead animals, which spread disease inside the castle. Gross Ola! That scientific device is a battering ram. It knocks down castle gates or walls, so the foot soldiers can run in through the hole, called a breach. Those pesky Saxon archers use wooden shields to hide behind and only peep out when they're firing a volley of arrows. The cowards! That port is full of boiling water, which we pour down on enemies trying to climb the walls. It leaves them boiling mad. <laughs> Behold! Hey! Quit it! Oh, that was my best siege uniform! In place of water, we sometimes use molten metal or boiling oil, which stick to the enemy's skin. Sticks to the skin? Ugh. Hail, friends. At least I hope you are friends. Those Saxons always seem to be knocking at my gates. I am William the Conqueror, Duke of Normandy, and also King of England. Although those Saxons seem to disagree with that last part. Although I am from Normandy, I had a legitimate claim to the English throne, so I invaded in 1066. I conquered my rival, Harold, at the Battle of Hastings. 
As king, I created the feudal society where peasants work for lords, lords work for barons, and barons work for me. It's good to be the king. Oh, the Saxons are revolting. Again, someone stole my doomsday book, and the Saxons, taking it as a sign of weakness, have decided to try and overthrow my castle with a siege. The Doomsday Book is a record of all the people and property in England, from the lowliest serf to the highest noble. It really helps me keep tabs on everyone. Perhaps they need a bath? But seriously, the Saxons are not happy having a foreign king like me. I burned much of the North Country to the ground once. But will they let bygones be bygones? No. You know, historical figures aren't always angels, but our acme job is to put history back on track. If William doesn't remain king, all of English history might change. This stone castle I recently built is strong enough to withstand any Saxon attack. But with this siege going on outside, I'm having trouble bringing in fresh supplies. Ah, a noble offer. I happen to have a secret passage out of this castle. Squeeze through and go find my barons and lords. Tell them my soldiers need some bread. It's a carbon note. Our thief must have slipped through this secret passage. Au revoir. Hurry back. That looks like an early version of the medieval coat of arms where colorful family emblems were painted on war shields. In 11th century England, castles had to be built fast, so they were usually made of wood instead of heavy stone. A wood castle could be finished in just three weeks. That is a molten bailey castle out there. My men dig a deep moat, piling the dirt up inside to make a tall hill. Then we build a wooden castle on the hill. Voila! Two defenses for the price of one. That's Lacey, my hunting dog. Just part of the pack I take on my afternoon hunts. I do the catching, she does the fetching. Hello? Welcome to my castle. Certainly, I am Baron Dupont, a peer without peer. I am also the ruler of this castle. Through talent and wisdom, of course. Oh, and it helped that I supported William the Conqueror when he invaded England. William gave most of the baronships to other French Normans like myself. Oh, it can be quite tiresome. These Saxons don't like having a foreign baron ruling them. To prevent them from rebelling, I must keep them very busy. I make sure they're always doing their specific jobs. Knowing their last names helps a lot. Help you? But I am a nobleman. It is very uncommon for me to help commoners. For the king? Why didn't you say so? In that case, helping you would be my crowning glory. What can I do to help? I know little of petty activities like making bread. Here is a list of my subjects. Perhaps one of them can help you. Salutations, dear Baron. May I help you? King William needs bread for his troops. Can you help? I would love to bake you some bread, but I am flourless and thus powerless. Do you have any flour? Hmm, no flour? Well, check with the Lord down the road. As I am a Baron and he is only a Lord, the feudal system requires that he help me out. We're off to the Lord. Each of those farmhouses belongs to a peasant. I give each peasant some of my land to farm, and he gives me back a share of what he grows. It's a feudal attempt at society. Neat windmill. What's it for? Oh, my peasants use it to raise water, grind grains, the usual farmy things. That peasant is being punished for stealing a chicken. He must spend one full day locked in the stockades while people toss rotten vegetables at him.
bummer. Must be humiliating, especially if they use broccoli. Yuck. Welcome to my estate, travelers. Of course, I've forgotten my manners. I am Lord Maynard. I report to Baron Dupont. Exactly. The Baron owns this estate and several others, but I live here and run it for him. He gives orders to me, and I pass the orders on to my peasants. It's the feudal way, you know. Oh, the usual things. I dispense justice, I listen to peasants complain about taxes, that sort of nonsense. A nobleman's work is never done. Well, not really. Most of this land was lent to me by Baron Dupont. In turn, I lend some of the land to peasants who work the soil. The French would call these peasants vilains. Well, it works like this. I lend some land to the vilains, and they in exchange give me part of the food they harvest from this land. Such are the ways of the feudal system. The baron needs flour? Well, I'm happy to help, of course. In fact, it is my feudal duty. Well, I do not have any flour on me at the moment, but one of my peasants may be able to help. Just point one out. Lordy Lord, good day. What can I do for you? The Baron needs flour to bake bread. Can you help? Yes, I can make some flour for you. I am a miller, after all. Here it is. Freshly milled flour for the Baron's bread. All yours. All righty then. Let's head back to Baron Dupont. Oh, this flour is perfect. I'll see what I can bake up. Hold on. Voila! My best bread for the king's best men. All right. Let's sneak past the siege and back into William's castle. Mmm, fresh bread. My hungry troops and I thank you. And now, my next task. We need more weapons. Could you stop by the Baron's place and see if he has any swords? Absolutely. Happy to help your kingship. Au revoir. Hurry back. Salutations once again. One of my subjects might give you the edge you... How'd you do, Mr. B? What do you need? The king needs more swords. Can you forge them? Oh, I'd dearly love to forge some swords, but the water barrel I use to cool my red-hot metals has sprung a leak. If you can find me a new barrel, I can forge ahead. You need a barrel? I believe the lord next door can roll one out for you. Greetings once again, travelers. Ah, no, you've got me over a barrel on that one. How do you do, my lord? May I help you? We must get a barrel for the Baron. Can you be of assistance? Oh, barrels aren't me business, I'm afraid. I'm more of a horse and buggy lass myself. Thank you anyway. Now be gone. Greetings. Ah, no. Hello there. Well, we must get a barrel for the Baron. Can you be of assistance? I know nothing of barrels, I'm afraid. I deal with what's in the water, not what holds water. Thank you anyway. Now be gone. <coughs> Greetings. Ah, no, you've... Hello, good lord. May I be of service? The Baron wants a barrel. Can you help? A barrel? I'm happy to make you a barrel. Back in a flash. <coughs> Ta-da! The finest barrel a baron could ask for. It won't leak a drop. Ah, 
Ah, now that's a fine watertight barrel. I'll fill it with water and make some swords in no time. <coughs> there you go, the finest swords in England. A real cut above the ordinary. <coughs> ah, these swords will give me the edge over those Saxons. <laughs> But now, my archers are all out of arrows. This is your final task. Check with my Baron and see if he has any arrows to spare. Sheesh! King William's got us pulling a lot of strings. Au revoir! Hurry back! Salutations once again! One of my servants can surely help. Which one? Good day to you all. What is the Baron's bidding? King William needs more arrows. Like to take a shot at making them? Sorry, I'd make you the straightest arrows in England, but I'm a little light on feathers right now. Do you happen to have any? No feathers for the arrows? You might be able to pluck some from the Lord down the road. By feudal law, he is obligated to help me. Greetings once again, travelers. I'm a lord, not a lark. But one of my subjects might be able to help. Who should I call? Hello, lord. How can I help? My friend the Baron requires some fine feathers. Do you have any? Feathers? Certainly. I'll use me hunting falcon to bring down some birds for you. Won't be but a moment. I'm back, and I bagged quite a few birds. I hope the feathers help. Silverific! You scored a shred of the Carmen note! Well, look at all these feathers. Just what a Fletcher needs. They'll make my arrows fly straight and true. Here you are. These are some of my finest arrows. Aha! Once I pass out these fine arrows, my men will easily repulse the Saxon siege. Victory is certain! <laughs> How about joining me in a celebration feast? Well, I'm not sure, Your Kingness. Come on, you can do a jig with my dancing bear. A dancing bear? Fantabulous! Count us in! William was right. The arrows we brought did the trick, and the siege is over. It's time to celebrate at this wild Norman dinner party. Yes, eat, eat. We Normans specialize in fine feasts. Superific! The final note of the Carmen note! Hold on! I'm activating the time cups! Dogs often roam the banquet hall sniffing out table scraps. Their thick fur can make for a handy napkin, you know. Only my most honored or powerful guests are permitted to sit with me here at the head table. I like to give them a heady dining experience. That loyal fellow is my royal taster. He tries a bit of all my food before I eat to make sure nothing is poisoned. Tasters are easy to find, but hard to keep. We Normans use live bears for entertainment. I love it when they stand on their hind legs to dance. That poor bear looks all jigged out. Oh, that siege has wearied my bones. I'm much too tired to talk. No wonder. When he's not battling, William I must juggle being King of England and ruler of Normandy and France, both at the same time. This is the Bayou Tapestry. 
created a few years back in 1077. Tapestries like this often told stories using pictures. In a way, it means the writing's on the wall. In feudal England, the fork wasn't invented yet, so folks ate their meat with their hands or from the tips of their sharp knives. Sometimes, instead of bowls, the Normans ate soup using tough bread called trenchers that could soak up the grease. I don't suppose they used napkins either. No vegetarians here. Upper-class Normans thought vegetables were fit only for peasants, so they didn't eat many. That excuse never worked with my mother. is a story banner telling how King William conquered England. We've slapped the cuffs on that wily warmonger, General Mayhem. No more warmongering for you, General Mayhem. You're heading back to Acme. I'll just have to plot a whole new campaign while stationed in the slammer. Congratulations! You clap the cuffs on General Mayhem and put that big old Domesday book back on the shelf. Old King William is a happy conqueror. And thanks to you, England's noble traditions will survive the centuries. I've decided to promote you. Consider yourself a time trooper. Congratulations. If you like, we could troop on ahead where another case is waiting. What do you say? Fine. Great job so far, by the way. Take some time off. Then we'll pick up the trail later. 